Hello and welcome, Bulletproof here with another War Thunder simulation mode tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the joystick setup. First off, one of the things that I recommend is finding the settings that you like and leaving them there. I don't recommend changing them as per the aircraft that you're flying as this is going to just involve a lot of hassle and leaving it just in one setting is going to let you get used to it per each aircraft. And it's going to be much easier. You want to keep things as consistent as you can changing the controls isn't going to do that for you. So without further ado, we'll go into the controls. So I'll use the roll axis to basically explain how these settings work for the roll, the pitch, and the yaw. The dead zone is basically what it sounds like. It creates more of a dead zone around zero input on your joystick than what would naturally be there. So we'll put that up to, all the way up to well, let's put all the way up to 50% just to show you how this uh, affects it. So if I move the joystick, and you'll see that red crosshair, which is what my joystick is actually doing in my hand. The green diamond is what the game is actually putting as an input to the aircraft. As I move it up to 50%, there's still no change in the actual aircraft input. But as I get out of that dead zone, the input starts changing. I usually like to have that at zero for roll. Nonlinearity, basically at one, which is all the way to zero, that is going to affect the the input so that for every 50% or whatever percentage you put in, the same percentage is actually put in by the game to the aircraft. If you change that to, for instance, 1.5, which is where I've been putting it at, that's going to make it so that the the input is going to be much more of a tangent curve so that in the beginning it's going to have less of an effect so if I put in you know a bit of joystick it's going to have less input to the aircraft but as we start getting towards the higher percentage input it's going to become much more of an exponential increase so that once you get to 100 percent joystick uh, movement the actual input to the game into the actual aircraft is going to also have 100 percent it's just going to have more of a change on the outside and less of a change on the inside and lower percentages. This will kind of help you make smaller changes, helps you be a little bit more precise, but if you get it too high, it was going to also be a little bit harder to actually make a little bit of a heavier input as that exponential increase is going to be much more dramatic at the end. As you can see, if I pull it all the way up to, t to 4, once we get to the edge of the tan graph where it starts becoming exponential it has a lot of change. The nonlinearity basically changes the input from a linear, for instance if it's at 1, for every percent input that you make into your joystick the game makes the exact same input to the aircraft. If you change it up to about 1.5 is where, where I usually like to have it it's going to be more exponential towards the outside of the graph around right here and the inside of the graph of the percent input that you make it's going to be a lot less of an input to the actual aircraft so if I make just small inputs as you can see the game makes a smaller input to the aircraft but as we get to the outside the game's input to the aircraft is more exponential so that by the time you get to 100% the game is also putting in 100% to the aircraft. But this helps you be a little bit more smooth of the aircraft. If you get it too high of a nonlinearity, then, as you can see, if I pull this all the way up, plus you get to the outside of this input percentage, it's going to be much more of an exponential and dramatic change. Multiplier, this is basically going to multiply the input. So if you make a 50% input, into your joystick it's going to make a 100% input if you have it at 2. At 1 it's going to be a 1 to 1 obviously. And lastly the correction is going to basically be a correction to what the joystick is making. For instance if your joystick is messed up and for whatever reason if you have it in the middle but it's always slightly to the edge you can make a correction with this setting. As you can see as I change it that green diamond changes with it. Technically speaking, this would be one way of actually putting in trim, but I wouldn't recommend using that as that's going to just make it complicated. 
so there's basically going to be similar settings if we go to the pitch as you can see dead zone nonlinearity multiplier and correction and for the yaw the same thing you'll notice one extra setting here this is pretty much for a keyboard setting this relative control if you put it to yes if you bind a keyboard button or something else to the input rather than being all the way 100% or 0% or 100% the other way this will let you have it have increasing value rather than that immediately to maximum for the other settings the roll sensitivity the pitch sensitivity and the yaw sensitivity this is basically settings that will change the speed at which the in-game pilot makes an input as opposed to the speed at which you make an input into your joystick this is one thing that will help you actually make a much more precise shot if for instance you have a very small travel on your joystick at four percent the speed is going to be much slower that the in-game pilot makes as opposed to yours at hundred percent the the input speed will be the same while it might be much more precise to do it at 100%, at 4%, I find that it is much easier to actually line up your shots and you stay out of trouble much better in terms of a spin and a stall for how fast you pull back. The force feedback multiplier and the insensitivity, I'm not entirely sure what these functions do, so I usually leave those alone. I believe the force feedback would be electronic force feedback into your actual joystick. The X-52 that I'm aware of doesn't have one, it's just the spring that essentially makes a form of a feedback. The control sensitivity is basically just a overall sensitivity that changes all three of these other sensitivity settings. So just to kind of show you the effect that this has of the sensitivity settings, I'm going to change my roll sensitivity all the way to 100%. And if you look at the joystick that the pilot has in game, I'm going to slam my stick all the way to the left, and you'll see the pilot will do the same thing with the same speed that I do it. When I let out, the pilot makes it happen at the same rate that I do on my joystick. Go back into controls, and we'll turn it back down to 4% where I had it. And as you'll see, I'm going to jam my stick all the way to the left, and you'll see the pilot makes much slower input than what the input that I put in. I just find that without the actual feeling of the air over the control surfaces that you get in an actual aircraft as well as a much bigger play of the joystick, this helps you be a little more precise with your controls. It helps you line up the shots a lot easier. So, I hope this helped. If you have any additional questions or need clarification on anything covered in this tutorial, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the YouTube or send me a message on the forums. If you have any other questions or would like me to make another tutorial video, don't hesitate to do the same thing. Thanks. Hope this helped. Happy hunting.